on World News Tonight. IMF warning. A global recession is being warned of by the IMF as they cut 2022 world GDP outlook. Surprise pullout. Russia to withdraw from the International Space Station after 2024. Dueling messages. The Trump and Pence rivalry intensifies as they consider 2024 presidential runs. And Comic Con is back. Dungeons and Dragons take the lead in opening San Diego's Comic Con. is other than in a world news tonight reporting from colombo here is suzanne chanelli good evening and thank you for joining us on world news tonight and we begin with the international monetary funds warning on the global economy the world may soon face an outright recession inflation is expected to remain high which could also lead to a tightening of global financial conditions in its latest report the imf lowered its earliest growth forecast the global economy this year, saying that many downside risks have materialized COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine are largely to blame for the current situation. Gloomy and more uncertain. That's how the International Monetary Fund described its latest World Economic Outlook report. The Washington-based institute cut its world GDP growth forecast for this year by 0.4 percentage points from its previous projection in April. Its new outlook is 3.2 percent. The chief economist at the IMF says with inflation expected to remain stubbornly high, the outlook has darkened significantly since April. The world may soon be teetering on the edge of a global recession, only two years after the last one. Multilateral cooperation will be key in many areas from climate transition and pandemic preparedness to food security and debt distress. He says many of the downside risks that the fund identified in April are now materializing, adding that a number of shocks have crushed the global economy already weakened by the pandemic. Higher than expected inflation, especially in the United States and major European economies, is triggering a tightening of global financial conditions. China's slowdown has been worse than anticipated amid COVID-19 outbreaks and lockdowns, and there have been further negative spillovers from the war in Ukraine. The revision is mostly due to sizable projected markdowns for the world's largest economies. The U.S. economy is expected to grow by just 2.3 percent this year. That's 1.4 percentage points down from the previous forecast. The IMF said the cut reflects a series of drastic monetary tightening measures and a weaker than expected consumer spending, adding that the U.S. has a very low chance of avoiding a recession. China's outlook was lowered by 1.1 percentage points to 3.3 percent. The IMF said its calculation was based on the continued spread of financial stress in China's real estate sector and its COVID-19 lockdowns. Among the major economies, South Korea's downgrade was relatively small, a cut of two-tenths of a percentage point from the previous projection to 2.3 percent. Although not stated in the report, South Korea's finance ministry says the government's latest supplementary budget likely had a positive effect on the IMF's moderate revision. Britain's two prime ministerial contenders were set to go head-to-head -head for the first time in a televised debate after the weekend of tough talks on China, taxes and immigration. The first major test for the two hopefuls in the race for number 10 Downing Street. Amid a cost-of-living crisis in the UK, early exchanges in the debate between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak were dominated by clashes over spending. I would reverse the increase in national insurance. We promise not to raise it in our manifesto in 2019. The people here who voted Conservative for the first time expect us to fulfil our promises. So the question is, should we pay that bill ourselves or do we put it on the country's credit card and pass the tab to our children and grandchildren to take care of? Now, I don't think that's right. The Conservative Party candidates expressed differing philosophies on taxation, with the current Foreign Secretary Truss wanting to avoid any increases. 
his mouth. We'd start paying it down it, it in is. three that, years. That's uh, simply not right. You promised me. almost excuse £40 me. You, billion pounds of unfunded tax cuts. But, 40 billion and the former finance minister wishing to balance the books through taxes. Both candidates also accused each other of not being tough enough on China, whilst Truss contrasted her publicly funded education with Sunak's fee-paying score. However, she also said she would like Sunak to be part of any future government. A snap poll showed Conservative voters thought Truss edged the debate by 47 to 38 per cent. European Union governments agreed to Russian natural gas this winter to protect themselves against any further supply cuts by Russia as Moscow pursues its invasion of Ukraine. EU energy ministers approved a draft European law meant to lower demand by gas by 15% from August through March. An emergency plan by the EU to save fuel for the upcoming winter. Member states agreed to voluntarily cut gas use by 15% from August to March. The principle is that we will share the pain equally. We have a clear alignment of unity and solidarity, and we wanted to send a clear signal to the world and to Kremlin. The latest move from the EU comes amid concerns over further supply disruptions from Moscow. This after Russian state-owned energy giant Gazprom said it would cut gas supplied via the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to 20% from Wednesday. Since uh, the war against Ukraine began, there is a clear pattern of Russian behavior to create uncertainty, increase prices and undermine the EU unity. This pattern is unlikely to change. Gazprom says supply cuts are due to a turbine which has not arrived after maintenance in Canada. The company also claiming a second turbine is now showing defects. The strategy is to keep the price high in Europe in order to make the political price even higher and hence divide Europe to split off solidarity with Ukraine. This council today with its decision has sent a strong, resolute signal against that and I think this will also be heard in Moscow. Europe cannot be divided. While the EU aims to show a united front, the deal to ration gas is a watered-down version of the original text with a host of exemptions included. Hungary also voted against the measure which it says is unenforceable. Hungary's actions come days after its foreign minister was in Moscow looking to boost gas supplies from Russia. Russia has said that it would withdraw from the International Space Station after 2024 to form its own orbital station. But a NASA official said Moscow has not communicated its intent to pull out of the two-decade-old partnership with the United States. The head of Russia's space agency publicly signaled his country's intent to withdraw from the International Space Station after 2024. But NASA says that's news to them. Video on Tuesday showed Yuri Borisov, Russia's newly appointed space chief, sitting down with Russian President Vladimir Putin and saying this. As you know, we operate in international cooperation at the International Space Station. Without a doubt, we will fulfill all our obligations to our partners. But the decision to withdraw from the station after 2024 has been taken. I think by this time, we will start to form a Russian orbital station. Russian space agency Roscosmos even released an image of its proposed new space station. But NASA's ISS director Robin Gatens said the Russians have communicated no such intent as required by the intergovernmental agreement on the station. I understand that we were taken by surprise uh, by the public statement that went out. And State Department spokesperson Ned Price also acknowledged Russia's unexpected move. Uh, it's an unfortunate development given the critical scientific work performed at the ISS, uh, the valuable professional collaboration our space agencies have had over the years, uh, and especially in light of our renewed agreement uh, on space flight uh, cooperation. The ISS arrangement between the U.S. and Russia is one of the last civil links between the two countries, as relations have sunk to their lowest point since the Cold War over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A football field-sized orbital laboratory some 400 kilometers or 250 miles above Earth, the station counts Canada, Japan and the European Space Agency as other key partners. But Russia and the U.S. are regarded as the outpost's core stakeholders. Russian thrusters control the station's position, while an American power grid keeps the outpost running. 
Officials had been working on keeping that partnership in place through 2030. And earlier this month, Russia and the U.S. agreed to resume sharing astronaut flights to the ISS. A new study says that the record heat waves in Europe are melting glaciers in the Alps at a record pace. Data shows that glaciers are on track for their highest mass losses in at least 60 years. Blistering heat waves in Europe have claimed lives and destroyed land. And now high temperatures are melting glaciers in the Alps at a record pace. According to data reported by Reuters, glaciers are melting at rates unseen in at least 60 years of record keeping. Over at the Swiss Motorach Glacier, two meters of mass melted away midway through the summer. On average, the glacier sees a seasonal melt of one meter annually. So at the first stake we measured, we had about two meters of melt. And the most extreme year since we have been measuring was one meter per year. So we have already melt a uh, melt of two meters. Um, and it's midway. He added the depth of the snow and packed ice has thinned by up to more than 180 meters and losses have been so significant that the change has already been seen on the tourist maps depicting the glacier. But it's not just the Swiss Alps that's seeing record melting. Glaciologists in Austria, France and Italy have also confirmed that glaciers there were on track for record losses. While most of the world's mountain glaciers are retreating due to climate change, experts say the European Alps are especially vulnerable because they're smaller with relatively little ice cover. Not to mention, temperatures in the Alps are warming around twice as fast compared to the global average. It also didn't help that the winter of 2021 saw very little snow. While the vanishing glaciers are already endangering lives, Swiss citizens are also concerned about the effect on their economy. Some of the ski resorts in the region, which rely on these glaciers, are now covering them with white sheets to reflect sunlight and reduce melting. And there are fears that things may get worse. Studies show that alpine glaciers are expected to lose more than 80 percent of their current mass by 2100 if greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and we are moving on to the updates in the United States. U.S. President Joe Biden and China's Xi Jinping are expected to speak. According to a source on a call, the White House said that earlier would include the topics of Taiwan and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In a bid to manage fraying relations with China, a long-discussed call between U.S. President Joe Biden and leader Xi Jinping is expected to take place this week. That's according to sources familiar with the matter, who said the call would happen on Thursday. But a long list of disagreements weigh heavy on ties between the world's two largest economies, from trade to Taiwan. Washington is seeking to ease U.S. dependence on Chinese-made microchips with a new bill providing more than $50 billion in subsidies as well as tax credits to chip manufacturers in order to ease a shortage that's disrupted multiple industries. That's as China ramps up its own efforts to produce its own homegrown chips. Biden on Monday urged for the bill's passage and met virtually with the chief executives of Lockheed Martin, Medtronic and Cummins. I watched China go from 2 percent to 16 percent. China's goal is to reach, they've stated, is 25 percent. They need to produce 25 percent to become fully self-sufficient. It's no wonder China's watching this bill so closely and actively lobbying U.S. businesses against the bill. The impending call also comes as Beijing delivers heightened warnings to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi over a possible visit to Taiwan. A trip by Pelosi would be the first by a House Speaker since 1997. But China claims the democratically ruled island as its own territory. And it said it is prepared to take strong measures in response should Pelosi visit. Washington adheres to a one-China policy and so does not have official diplomatic relations with Taiwan. However, it is bound by U.S. law to provide the island with the means to defend itself. The White House has been quick to reiterate that stance has not changed. 
Former U.S. President Donald Trump returned to Washington for the first time since leaving office, but his vice president and his potential 2024 rival was there as well. Tonight, the return, 552 days since leaving the White House after the deadly assault on the Capitol in his name. Former President Trump's back in Washington with a dark view of the country. Our country is now a cesspool of crime. We have blood, death, and suffering on a scale once unthinkable. And again, falsely claiming he won the 2020 election. We got millions and millions more votes. What a disgrace it was, but we may just have to do it again. Still, even in the Republican Party, Mr. Trump's been damaged by the unrelenting revelations from the January 6th committee. President Trump summoned the mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack. Today's visit also shining a light on divisions within the GOP, with his running mate turned potential 2024 primary rival, former Vice President Mike Pence, in Washington as well, offering a stark contrast. Some people may choose to focus on the past, but elections are about the future. And I believe conservatives must focus on the future to win back America. Their dueling appearances coming just as Pence's publisher announced the title of his upcoming book, So Help Me God, where Mr. Trump's once loyal sidekick chronicles President Trump's severing of their relationship on January 6th. Now, while one part of the United States is burning down, another part is being washed away. In California, progress is being made in the battle against the state's biggest wildfire of the year. But then the St. Louis area is under a state of emergency after catastrophic flooding caused by over nine inches of rain. That's the most in one day in more than a century there. Freaking crazy. That's the highway. Tonight, stunning images of the latest American city to get slammed with severe weather. Across St. Louis, historic rainfall and flash flooding. We got stalled out cars here. Forcing rescue after rescue. We have seven people trapped on a roof. Roughly 100 people trapped in these apartments, evacuated by boat. I was terrified because it's just so high. More than nine inches of rain falling since midnight, shattering records set in 1915 and turning highways and roads into raging rivers. It was so dangerous with the water flow, we had to pull them out. We couldn't even get our trucks on. Authorities confirming one person trapped in their car has died. And in suburban St. Peter's, water surged into an animal shelter. Staff scrambled, saving most of the animals, but devastated to learn 10 puppies drowned. Thank you so much. Reporters from our affiliate KSDK out covering the chaos were rescued by firefighters when fast-moving water flooded their news car. The mayhem in Missouri marking the latest severe weather event to wallop the U.S. Tonight in the Pacific Northwest and South, 32 million Americans remain under heat alerts. Dallas hitting its 31st 100 degree day of the year. The extreme heat, scientists say, supporting more intense rainfall, making flash floods like this one in St. Louis more frequent. Three United Nations peacekeepers and at least 12 demonstrators have been killed in escalating anti-UN protests in eastern DR Congo. A tragic conclusion to protests in the DRC. Several demonstrators were killed on Tuesday as anger boiled over the presence of the UN stabilizing mission in the country. The number of peacekeepers also confirmed dead in the clashes. The casualties occurred in the eastern towns of Butembo and Goma, while 350 kilometers to the north in Beni, soldiers staved off protesters on the road leading to the UN's army base. It comes a day after crowds stormed the Monusco headquarters in Goma, fueled by Senate calls for the organization to leave the country. First deployed in 1999 as a UN observer mission, Monusco's mandate has been to conduct counter-offensive operations. But locals have become disillusioned, accusing the body of failing to end the bloody conflict in the eastern DRC. Civilian massacres are a common occurrence at the hands of more than 120 armed groups in the region. The M23 militia has meanwhile resurfaced after lying dormant for years, with the rebels making serious inroads into eastern Congo, leaving thousands displaced. Monesco, which has already shown a willingness to leave, condemned the latest attacks which it blamed on groups of looters. The UN also says that the peacekeepers have been kept to protect civilians, with more than 16,000 personnel currently stationed in the Congo.
Welcome back to World News tonight and for more news let's take you around the world in a minute. North Korea held a mass conference of war veterans in Pyongyang to commemorate the 69th anniversary of the Korean War Armistice, a holiday that the North calls Victory Day, but Kim Jong-un was reportedly absent. A powerful 7.1 magnitude earthquake struck the northern Philippines island of Luzon. The earthquake killed four people, damaging buildings and sending strong tremors through the capital, Manila. Pope Francis said that the Catholic Church should accept institutional blame for the harm done to indigenous Canadians in residential schools that try to wipe out native cultures, taking his historic apology for the abuse they have suffered one step further. French President Emmanuel Macron described the global food crisis as one of Russia's weapons of war during the visit to Cameroon, dismissing suggestions of Western sanctions were to blame. U.S. retailers suffered share price losses after a forest cut from Walmart, worried investors that similar warnings of the other retailers could be imminent. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed to watch any of the stories we air tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we are leaving you tonight with a look at San Diego opening doors for the comic fans as Comic-Con kicks off with Dungeons & Dragons. Stay safe and have a good night.